Hi, I'm here with artist and adventurer Juliet Crane. Hello, Juliet. Hi, Fiona. Thank you so much for talking with me today. It's a pleasure. How's your week been? It's been really great. Mm -hmm. um, I did a little bit of painting with some friends last night, which was pretty fun. Was you painting an owl or was you painting other things? We actually did some spray painting of background in my backyard. Oh, wow. And that was kind of our first layer. And then we went um, into my studio and sort of found things within the backgrounds. And I ended up painting an owl and so did my girlfriend. So that was kind of, she had never painted characters before and so it was kind of funny that she found an owl in her painting <laughs> well that's yeah. good so when did you first pick up a paintbrush um pretty I was pretty young I was maybe about five when I took over my parents ping pong table in the basement and decided to spread out tons of sheets of typing paper and I just layered watercolors and played with watercolors and sort of loved just smearing the color around. And then um, once they dried, I sort of just did crayon drawings and pen drawings on top. That was sort of the start of creating backgrounds for me. Were your parents creative? Yeah, both of my parents. Um, they're really creative. My mom mostly, she does a lot of cooking and baking and things, and she's always done some sewing and quilting. And my dad is an inventor and engineer, so he's always done creative building type stuff. And I have looked through some of his sketchbooks when he was in high school, and I wish that he would keep doing some more drawing because he's a pretty talented artist. He's definitely, both of them are real creative thinkers. And do you think that's helped you along the way as well? It's definitely helped me. I think they absolutely taught me to think outside of the box and think completely creatively and as if anything is possible with no boundaries and so that's really I think helped develop my style too. I also featured quite strongly in your work. Do you have a story connecting to to owls in your child? Yeah I think um, mostly when I was growing up I remember one owl statue that um, it was carved out of wood and had these yellow jeweled eyes and it made a huge impression on me when I was little because it, it was basically as tall as I was. And I could just stare at the eyes and they always looked real, like some little creature was really looking back at you. And unfortunately, that owl, it was a gift that my parents had gotten for their wedding when they first got married. And um, it was lost in a move. And so it's not even around anymore, but we have lots of photos of it. And I, it's kind of fun to look back on. So do you think that's that, that was the moment where it came to you with the owls? I think that memory was sort of the first one when I started painting owls. I remembered that statue and I think though the owls and me painting owls are a lot bigger than that. I think it really has to do with, well it's kind of funny because my last name is Crane so my parents have always collected cranes and so and been bird watchers and things like that so like birds in general have always been a big part of what an owl represents sort of symbolically being um, a teacher and sort of this this wise creature sort of mysterious that watches over everything and to me tells stories and I definitely think of myself as a storyteller too so I think that's sort of a big part of it as well. I like the paintings of the girls that you do where do you draw inspiration from this and and are they based on anyone? I think that they're really based on a combination of people and experiences in my everyday. I really try and um, do a lot of traveling and wandering and just soaking in of my environment. And I never base a painting on anyone in particular. It's just sort of all of those emotions from those experiences that get spit back out into a painting and that I somehow relate to in the character in my painting. You do many different types of styles of girls. Do, do you, does it come from observation then? Yeah, I think um, in particular their expressions, that's what I pay the closest attention to, just sort of watching people and when their moods change or evolve and looks sort of like those little looks that people give each other that would, it's like a secret moment, you know, that you, just because you're, if you stop and you watch, you can pick up those little moments. And that's sort of the 
moment I like to express in my painting. And um, in terms of like their dress and their hair and that stuff, I don't really think about it. Just kind of that sort of happens. And a lot end up having red hair and I have red hair. And that's always been a, a big part of my life and who I am. So those are usually more self-portraits, I would say. Where did you learn your unusual technique? I, when I was in college, I had a friend who really liked to do spray painting. And so he and I would always make stencils and do spray painting on t-shirts together. And that's sort of where the spray painting started to come from. I've always just had a huge collection of art supplies, whether it was glitter or acrylic paints or watercolors or ink. And it never really occurred to me that you couldn't use one thing with another and so I just always keep everything out in my studio and you know spray paint and everything and if I feel like using it I just go with that feeling and combine everything into one piece. Would you describe yourself as an artist with no boundaries? Perhaps that's a good (laughs) description. (laughs) Yeah I never it never occurs to me to I, I at least try something to see if it will work. And if it doesn't work, sometimes I figure out new techniques that I love using instead. How do you deal with something when a painting doesn't work? How do you get around that? How do you problem solve that? Yeah, I really always just, I know that I can get through it. And because I often mess up my paintings, I use wax as a top coat sometimes. And when I apply the wax, I actually use an iron on top of the finished painting to melt the wax so it's nice and smooth. And I've definitely had times where I've completely melted off my character's eyes. (laughs) And from there, it's like, of course, that's really frustrating. But I end up fixing it and creating new eyes, and they're usually better than the first ones. And that's kind of what keeps me going through all my mistakes, is that I know I did it the first time. I can totally replicate what I did again and probably even better. What inspires you? I'm mostly inspired by different experiences that I have. I love meeting people and listening to their stories. I just love traveling and seeing new places. And I think all of that just really inspires me in general. And it definitely, all of that goes into my work as well. You've recently launched a How to Paint an Owl e-course. This is a very brave move, I think. And are you not scared other people will copy your style or do you think this is just the way the art world is going now, you know, the sharing network? Yeah, I think mostly a lot of people ask me that and I'm not really scared of anyone copying my work because I feel that there's so many layers in each of my paintings that if someone was to even try to copy something, they would end up doing tons of layers themselves and by the end of it, it would end up being their own painting anyways. That's why I love sharing and teaching how I paint and what I paint because I think it just promotes other people to be creative and it promotes them to find their own creativity. And I have no shortage of ideas, so I'm always creating something new anyways, so I don't mind teaching what I've already done. How do you help people get through their creative blockages? I think a huge way that I help people be creative is and not get so frustrated with their creativity is um, mostly by sharing how I get frustrated and then work through my creative blockages because I do a lot of posting of start to finish photos and sharing those, the in-between time where it goes from a beginning painting and then kind of gets a little bit ugly sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when people see how I've worked through, like I like telling people how I decided to cover up certain things and decided to keep other parts of the painting. And I really share that part of my process with people. And so it, I think it helps others learn how to do it themselves so that they're never really copying anything. They're just using techniques that I've taught and sort of rules that I've taught myself to get through things, to get through their own creative blocks on their own. Where can we buy your e-course? On my website, I have a link to my e-course. And also I have an Etsy shop online where I sell all of my work and my classes on there as well. My website is julietcrane.com. 
And my Etsy shop is julietcrane.etsy.com. Where are you from originally? I am originally from Wisconsin. It's Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. And it's just sort of like a little town in the Midwest with lots of flower fields and gardens and things. Where did you study? I went to the University of Minnesota and I studied, I went there for environmental biology because I love nature, but um, my first, within the first semester, I missed the art that I had been doing earlier. And in high school, I did a lot of art. I needed to take an art class. So I signed <laughs> up right away and started taking art classes through um, the university and ended up doing painting as part of my major. And I didn't think, though, that I could continue to do painting outside of college. So I quick got a journalism degree as well. And that's what I started out doing once I graduated, is journalism. Would you like to expand your product range and what would you like in there? Yeah, I'm currently developing a lot of new products. Um, I definitely see my artwork on things like journals and pillows and wall hangings. I would also like to do some of my artwork on fabric and create some beautiful clothing for myself and other people to wear. Um, and I'm also branching out into doing some calendars and note cards and some limited edition prints as well. So I'm really excited about all of that. And this all can be found on your website as well, can't it, on the Etsy shop? Yep, it's yep. all in my Etsy shop. How many stockists have you got? Currently, I sell um, most of my prints and originals locally in Madison, Wisconsin, where I live. There's the Hatch Art House. is a really cute little gallery, along with Absolutely Art and the Glitter Workshop, all here in Madison. And I'm definitely expanding, though, starting to sell in different shops around the world as well. So if, if yeah. money was no option... What would be the first thing you do for your business first and then in your life? For my business, I would absolutely love to, I've always wanted to wear clothes with my art on them and not just a t-shirt with my art print on the, on the front, but I would love to see some of my owls or girls replicated in patterns for just gorgeous flowing skirts and dresses and cute little tops and things too. And of course, on bags, and I would just love to be able to have the time to design all of that and manufacture it. I think that'd be really, really, really fun. Then I think personally, I would just love to travel a whole lot more and live in different cities and countries all, all around the world and be able to paint everywhere. What do you love doing when you're not painting? I love to cook. I have a little cooking club where we meet once a month and um, a bunch of people get together and basically we, we cook, but then we mostly enjoy eating and good conversation <laughs> with, with each other. And then I also just love traveling and making dinner for other people too. We have lots of dinner parties and I do a lot of gardening also. I love my flower gardens. I have a lot of fun with that. And if you wasn't an artist, what would you be? What would I be doing if I wasn't a painter? I cannot imagine not painting. I love it so much. So I know I would always be doing that and probably some kind of art in different, different forms. Um, but I also love to write and write stories and I love to travel. So I think I'd definitely love to try my hand at travel writing at some point. So could we be seeing a book in the future? Absolutely. Um, I have quite a few ideas for books. It's definitely a way for me to combine my love of art and writing and storytelling. And I will definitely be putting together a few in the very near future. Do you write a blog? Can people follow you? Yeah, I do keep up a blog. Pretty much three or four times a week I post new artwork or places I've traveled, dinner party photos. Um, recipes and things like that. Definitely all my art experiences I share on my blog each week. JulietCrane.blogspot.com. It's been lovely talking to you, Juliet. Thank, Thank you so you. much. <laughs> and I'll speak to you again soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you would like to know more about artist Juliet Crane, go to www.julietcrane.com.